You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Lifeline broadcast hosted by Apostle Shirley Jones. She is the senior pastor of Rehoboth Family Life Center, and we are located at 17900 Queen Anne Road, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20774. Service on Sunday is at 10 a.m., and we would be honored to have you come out to worship and fellowship with us. We are indeed being blessed by the Lord every Sunday. We have Bible study via teleconference every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. The dial-in number is 712-432-3100. The access code is 386-279. Apostle Jones' book, Lifeline, When God Speaks, Volumes 1 and 2, can be purchased at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and any place books are sold. You can also send your request to www.shirleyjjones.com To purchase the book along with a worship CD birth during her time sitting before the Lord. Lifeline When God Speaks is a book of encouraging words that God gave for her life and now she shares to encourage you in your journey. So be sure to get a copy. Apostle Jones can be reached via email at Apostle S. Jones at RehobothFLC.org or by phone at 1-877-354-6082. She would love to hear from you. Remember, the broadcast is the first Monday of each month. Get the word out now to Lifeline Broadcast with Apostle Shirley Jones. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining me tonight for the Lifeline broadcast. To God be all the glory. I pray that everyone has had a good day today, and I bless God for that. I am so honored and glad to be a part of this network when Christians speak talk radio show, where the mission and the vision is to spread the gospel, and folks will be saved and encouraged to be true kingdom dwellers. To God be the glory, amen, amen, and amen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open us up in prayer, and then we're going to go ahead and jump into the word for tonight. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God, and I bless you and I honor you, Lord God. I give you all praise, Father God, and all honor and glory belongs to thee. I pray that, God, that you would just bless us tonight. I pray that, God, that you would bless every listener that's on the broadcast tonight. I pray that, God, that you would give them a listening ear that they may hear. But, God, I pray that they not just be hearers but doers as well. I pray that, Father, that you would be glorified. I pray that even now, Father, that you would just bless me, Father God, to speak your oracles of your word and that your people may be blessed. I thank you for this opportunity. Father God, in Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, and amen, amen. Well, I'm excited about the broadcast tonight. I have just had this this stirring in my spirit probably over the last month or so uh, in what I believe that the Lord is calling not only for uh, this as a message, but I believe for the body of Christ, the church, and those that are even in the world, uh, that we would come into a right relationship with him. So as we look around, just think about this, y'all. As we look around the world, there there's a lot of things that are just out of control and out of order, and we don't have to look very far. I mean, we look, I mean, there's so many things that's going on in the government. We we look at uh, marriages are, are, are falling apart. We, we look at how our children are being attacked. We, we see where... Family members are coming against family members. We're, we're, we're looking at so many things that we see that are out of control. But the one thing that I, I sense in my spirit is that I believe that we are embarking upon one of the greatest times of the move of God upon the earth. Whenever there's, there's darkness and things that are happening, 
that, that I believe God is just setting us up to show who's really in control and who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. So I just want to say tonight that the message that I'm going to be teaching on, it's called come, just come, come. And God is saying to us tonight to come, come before him that we may be shaken out of our complacencies, out of things that plague us and keep us in bondage, that causes us to doubt him, to think that our situation is never going to change because it has been for so long. It hasn't changed yet. The illness that is wrecking our body and pain, the lack in our finances, we are looking at divorce as our only solution and option. Our child is headed on the road of destruction. We just lost a parent, a child, or a best friend, and the list goes on and on and on or of some things that we may be struggling with or having to deal with. But even with all of those things and with, with, with the chaos upon the earth, we, we serve a God, the almighty God, who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think, and he's the one that tells us to come, to come. You know, life, life situations and the trick of the enemy can have us looking at what is so wrong and not the God that is bigger. Where have we lost the fervor for God and the things of God? And that's one of the things that I heard him say to me last week. He says, but has the church and how the people lost their fervor for me? They're, they're longing for me because some things can come and trip you up. Some things can come and, and, and get your attention so much that we're looking at it and we're not looking at God. But today, today, hallelujah, today, God is saying to us, come. He says, I have need of you upon the earth. I desire to not only live within you, but rest upon and through you, that the darkness upon the land may be dispelled by my presence with you. There are higher heights and deeper depths in me for the journey ahead. Once again, he says, just come. Just come. One of the things he mentioned to me the other day, he says that we're taking hits that we need not take that keeps us from moving forward. Remember when Jesus said that it is finished? When he said that it was finished, the veil was rent that separated man from God, where the priest would go in once a year and make a sacrifice first for himself and then the sins of the people. And now we have this open invitation to come to have audience with God for ourselves. That same, same spirit that moved upon the earth, moved upon the earth. And this is one of the things. Let me stop right here. I, I need to interject this. I was talking about this in church about two Sundays ago. That when you think about it, when the veil was rent, that it wasn't just an ordinary veil. The veil was very high, the veil, the veil was very thick, and it was very wide. And Jesus did not touch the veil. It was when he spoke, he said, it is finished. So that, 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 that command of what he said, it is finished, the Spirit of God just began to move upon the earth, and that veil was rent from the top to the bottom. And that, that enables us now to, to be able to come. But think about this. Imagine after all this was being done for us that we can come and be delivered and set free and be endowed with power and authority over the things that come to plague us. He just said, come, come. He did all of this. But imagine all of this has been done for us and we're still not coming. And I'm not saying that it's easy because there are things that have plagued my life. There are things that, that threw me off my, 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 the path that I, I needed to be on. But, but I, I, I understand that when I come before him, regardless of what I'm going through, that there's nothing that I've gone through that has bigger, been bigger than the God that I serve. And every time that I've gone through something that has plagued my life, it wasn't until I got back in the face of God that allowed me to, to be able to move forward. So God is saying to us, he says, regardless of what's happening in the earth today, that God is calling for his people. He says, come, come, come on, come on, sit with me. Come spend some time with me. Get, get in my presence so that you'll be able to deal with the circumstances of your life. So he's saying, come, y'all, come. Come, sit with me. Come in my presence. Come talk to me. Come, come lay your birds at my feet. Come, just come. Come before me, my children so that you'll be able to deal with the situations that crop up. You have to be that determined to come. 1 Corinthians 2, 2 says, 
For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. This was Paul. Paul said, I am determined. And that's that's how we have to be. We have to be determined that no matter what happens, no matter what what we're going through, that is not bigger than the God that we serve. He says, I don't know anything except Jesus Christ and him crucified. We have got to be that determined. So through this, this teaching tonight, I want us to think about where have we gotten off track? You know, what, what's pulling us away from God? What, what has our attention, what has caused us to look to the left and not to the hills from whence cometh our help? What is it that's keeping us up at night? What, what are some of those things that, that we're going through that, that causes us to, to be in turmoil? What are some of the things that we're doing and, and, and that's happening in our lives that, that we don't see him high and lifted up? Because he's saying tonight, I need you to come. Because he knows he has the answer to every situation. He has the answer to every situation and every circumstance, and it's nothing too hard for God to do. So we've got to be determined, y'all, to, to stay before him and to come. Now, let's look at a couple situations in the, in the word of God where we saw the determination to get before the Lord. This is over in mm, Mark chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. And this is a familiar piece of scripture that I love. This is where the friends were going to make sure that their friend got before Jesus. That's Mark chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. And it says, And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they laid down the bed wherein the man of the palsy lay. Now this is where there was a friend. They had a friend that was on this bed of affliction. And he had his four friends. They had heard that Jesus was a deliverer, that Jesus was healing folks. And they got their boy, and they say, look, boy, you know, we're we, we going to carry you to the meeting. But it says that they came nigh unto him for the press. There were a lot of people that were, were in the doorway. There were a lot of people on the steps. They couldn't get into the house where, where Jesus was. But these boys were determined. They said that we heard that he is a deliverer. We heard that he is a healer. So what we're going to do is make sure that you get your healing and your deliverance today. They heist him up. Now, check this out. They heist him up on the bed. They didn't take him off the bed. I thought that was interesting. They heist him up on the bed, the four of them. They heist him up on the roof. And even when they got the bed on the roof, now they had to take some of the shingles off the roof. They had to cut a hole in the roof. And then they had to lower the bed down into the room where Jesus was. Oh, glory to God. How many of us would have got to the meeting and said, you know, maybe we just come back tomorrow. It's just too many folks there, and we can't get into the house, and how are we going to get there? But but these boys tapped into the creative juices. They said, no, we, we may not be able to get them in the door, but we can drop them down the roof. Oh, glory to God. See, we got to be that determined that, that regardless of my situation, I've got to get in the face of God. I've got to get in the presence of God because that's the only thing that's going to cause my situation to change. And when they lowered the bed, we know how that went. They lowered the bed. And you imagine Jesus seeing that happen. He he had to 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 say to them that they never seen such great faith and, and determination, and, and, and their friend was healed, and he was able to pick up his bed and, and walk. Oh, hallelujah. They were determined to do this, and this is how determined that we have to be, regardless of what's going on, regardless of the obstacles, but we have to make that press until we get in the presence of God, knowing that it's in the presence of God that I want no more, in the presence of God where there is fullness of joy. And so we have to be that determined. And then you have blind Bartimaeus, and, 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 and he was at a place where he was not going to miss his chance with Jesus. And this is in uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 50. And it says, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thy son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, 
be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he casting away his garment rose and came to Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Here he was. He was a, he was a, he was, he was blind. But here they telling him, shut up, man. What you making all that noise? Shut up. Don't be making all that noise. But he knew. Oh, glory to God. He couldn't see. Uh, but he could tell. He could tell that something was happening that was bigger than him. He had heard the word that Jesus was healing folk. He was opening blinded eyes. He was he was raising the dead. He he heard some things about him, and he said, this is my opportunity that, that he couldn't see him. But I, I'm quite sure that he could feel that there was something different that, that just stepped into the area and what she was, and he says, I'm going to get my healing. He said, son of, son, 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 son of David, have mercy on me. He began to cry out, and they began to tell him to be quiet, but this is where he was able to get his sight. What if he had to listen to them? What if, what if he had a, just got quiet because they told him? So you got to be careful when, you, when you're running after your deliverance, and if you're running after uh, a, a change in your life, you you got to be careful of who you share and stuff with because folks can be discouraging and tell you it don't take all of that, but they don't understand, oh, it take all this and some for me. I don't know about you, but I'm going to get my deliverance. I'm going to get before God and whatever that takes, and that's what I'm going to do. you got to be determined regardless of the naysayers, regardless of people thinking you're strange because I know folks thought I was strange. Matter of fact, I think there's some people that still think I'm strange, but it's okay because I know that I'm, I'm, I'm walking in the path in which God has carved out for my life. And, and I'm, every day I'm trying to, to stay grounded and rooted in the place in which God has called me. So I don't have time to try to justify why I do what I do. I do it because God says so. So you've got to be that determined regardless of, of what people think of you, regardless of what people say about you. But if you know that, that he has has the key to life, if he has the key to your hope, he has the key to your deliverance, that you're going to do everything that it takes to get before him. And then we had the woman with the issue of blood. Remember the woman with the issue of blood over in Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 to 21. And it says, Behold, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood 12 years, she came behind him and she touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. Here was a woman with the issue of blood. We all know this story. She had the issue of blood for 12 years. And because she had this issue of blood, she was considered an outcast. She lived probably on the far end of the of the town, and everybody knew that she was a woman that was diseased. They knew that she was a woman that had, had a stench about her. She didn't have any friends, and, and she couldn't work, and, and she was probably very poor. And, 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 and But now, once again, she heard she got word. She got word that there was a man that was coming in, and he wasn't just an ordinary man, but he was the son of God, and, 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 and that he could heal her, and he could, and he could deliver her. And, and so she said, you know what? I know that they're going to recognize me as I I make my way into town, and even the smell that's on her body would give her away. But I believe that she wrapped herself up in her garment, and she tied herself up real, real, real tight, and she was hoping that, that nobody could smell the stench on her. But she says, well, I'm going today to get my deliverance. And so she pressed her way, and she was probably cowered down and, and wrapped up, hoping that nobody would recognize her. That's that lady. That's her. What is she doing out of, out of the place that she's supposed to be? Out, out on the outskirts of town, but she made her way, and she was able to maneuver through the crowd, wrapped up in a garment. Probably her head was tied up. Her face was partially tied up, and she's hoping that nobody would see her and nobody would smell her, but she had to make her way to Jesus, and she made her way to him, and all she could get is close to just to touch the hem of his garment, and it said that when she touched the hem of his garment that she was made whole at that, at that instance, that, 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 the, that the sickness upon her began to dry up. Oh, glory to God, because she was what? She was determined. I'm quite sure that she had tried all these people, all the men and, and doctors that came through town, and nobody could help her. She had no friends, y'all. She, people were talking about her. She's that lady, but she made this day. She said, hook or crook, come hella high water. I'm going to get my deliverance. 
and she made her way through there, and she got her deliverance. So you got to be that determined. I am not going to be in this situation another day. I am not going to sit here and have a pity party. I'm not going to sit here and allow people to tell me that my situation is not going to change. I am not going to even tell myself that my situation is not going to change, but my situation is going to change because of the God that I serve. You got to press your way, even with all the obstacles that may be upon you, but if I could just touch, oh, hallelujah, the hem of his garment, then I will be made whole. I remember, and I think I might have shared this before on the line, I remember getting a, a tooth extracted, and for whatever reason, when I ever get a tooth extracted, I go to two extremes. Either I, I get dry sockets or I begin to pass clots of blood. And I remember this particular time getting an extraction done, and, and in the middle of the night, I woke up and my mouth was filled of blood clots. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is this? Why is this doing this? And I'm laying there. It's the middle of the night. I can't call the dentist. I can't really call anybody. So I just began to pray. And as I began to pray, I could, I could feel like there was a presence that, that came in my room and stood at my bed. And all I could hear was, but if you could just touch the hem of my garment. And I remember reaching out, literally reaching out to to what was standing next to my bed as, as I reached out and touched that immediately the clots began to loosen out of my mouth and I can get up and spit them out and it stopped. The bleeding stopped and by morning time I was able to get to the doctors to find out what the dentist to find out what was going on. But by the time I got there, everything had ceased and he just had to do some stitching to cause the gums to, to be able to close up. But I, I, I know what that, that's like. It's like, I know that that was Jesus that walked in the presence of Jesus at my bed and telling me that just to reach out. And when I touched, it's when I got my healing. Oh, glory to God. We have got to be that determined, y'all, that regardless of what situation we in, that he is our answer. He is the place that we go. He is the thing that we do. And there's nothing too hard for him to do. Hallelujah. Psalm 42, 1 says, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. And this is one of my favorite scriptures, and I probably have said this on the line before and shared about this before. This is where David talks about, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O Lord. And if you can understand, I've done some research about the heart and the panting in the water. And, 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 and when somebody is panting, that's not a regular breathing uh, rhythm. When you're panting, you're, that means you're out of breath. You can, you're, you're, gra you're, you're gasping for breath. This means that you have been, been running or, or traveling for a long time and your, your energy level is low and, and now you're finding a hard time to breathe. It says, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, at any time a heart before the heart lays down, it puts some markings and it puts markings down so that if it has to make a quick run, it knows which path it needs to go. And so the heart right here is panting. He's panting because now I believe he is wounded. He's wounded, but, but I also did some research and it says that if when they're wounded, if they could get to some water, the water will cause the bleeding and their blood to clot. And so they can stop bleeding and have a better chance of getting better and getting healed and getting away. But remember now, the heart is wounded. The heart is wounded, so that means that the heart is bleeding. But not only that, is he's trying to get to some water. But because he's lost a lot of blood and, and he's wounded, he, he, he's not sure of which way he needs to go, that he can't read the the markings on the trees uh, that he made before he laid down. So he's, he's, he's coming unglued. He, he doesn't know which way to go, and, he, and he's panning, and he, he's probably going around in circles saying, you know, I need some water, and he's trying to allow his senses to, 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 to direct him of where the water brook is. And, but he also knows that because he's still bleeding, that, that there, there's an enemy behind him who has smelled blood, and we know that whatever attacked him, has now smelled blood, and he's going in for the kill. But he says, if I could just get to the water brooks. 
And he says, but so pain is my soul after thee, O God. Oh, hallelujah. So we've got to be that determined that, that that's where my lifeline is, is that if I can get to him, then I know that everything's going to be all right. And even when the enemy is on my trail, if I can get to, to God and, and get before the Lord, and I know that everything's going to be okay. And that's where the heart finds himself at. He says, there's an enemy that's on my trail. He smells my blood. There's blood dripping so he can see where I'm going, but I don't even know where I'm going. I'm trying to smell the freshness of the water so that I can get to the water so my blood can clot. And it also, and I just saw this, thank you, Lord, that even the blood will begin to clot, but also when he gets to the water, it cleans the blood off of him. So now he has, doesn't have any more blood on him, so the enemy is not sure where he is. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I just saw that, y'all. It's that, that when we get when we get to God, when we get before him, when he says come, then the enemy can't really get to us because now that, that we're hidden in him and he can't find us and he can't get to us. And, and, and that's where we have to find ourselves regardless of you might have did this to me and you might have did that to me. But when I get into the presence of God and when I, when I come before him, I am protected and, and I am kept and the enemy can't find me. He can't get to me now because, but I'm being circled and I'm being covered uh, by the almighty God. Oh God, I thank you tonight. God, I bless you, God, and I honor you, oh God, even now the more. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I just saw that with the heart in the water and, and, and the blood being off of him so the enemy doesn't know where he is. And that's what happens when we find ourselves in God. The enemy doesn't know where we are, but we're crouched down in the presence of God, and he's watching over us, and he's keeping us. We got to come, y'all. We got to come. We do ourselves a disservice of trying to, to live our lives, and, and, and we don't have a covering. We can't, we can't find our hiding place, and we can't come before him that he can protect us and he can keep us. Oh, hallelujah. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah, come. God, I thank you tonight. Ephesians 2, 6. And he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He says, come, come. There is a seat that has already been carved out for you in heavenly places that you have more than one dimension that you can live out of. And I bless God for that tonight, that I'm in the earth, but I'm not of the earth. And so when I'm in the earth and the earth begins to challenge me, then I can find that there is a sitting place in heavenly places, according to Christ Jesus, that I can sit there in another place. I got another seat that I don't have to stay where there's obstacles. I don't have to stay where there's chaos, but I can find myself. Hallelujah seated in heavenly places, and when I get to my seat in heavenly places, that regardless of what's happening to me in the natural, it doesn't compare to the glory that I'm, I'm involved in in the heavenly places. Oh, so we have to hasten. The Bible says hasten to the throne of grace. Uh, when you find that you're going through, if you can just hasten to the throne of grace, get before God, be determined. I am determined in myself that I am victorious because of the God that I serve. And, and he just says, come, come, come. Let's not do ourselves a disservice and not come, but come because he's made a way for us to come. Oh, glory to God, to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus where I can get answers for what I need. I can find healing in my body. I can have my mind renewed. I can, I can get instructions. I, I, can, I can have a touch. I can, I can, I can, I can be kept from, from the vultures and the things that are swarming around trying to destroy me. But I have a place in the heavenlies with Christ Jesus. Oh, glory. We thank you tonight, God. And once again, he keeps saying, come, come, come and have audience with me. So what happens, y'all, when we come? When we come, what happens? Matthew 11, 28 to 30, and this is one of my, I keep saying this is one of my favorite scriptures, but this really, really is, because this is one of the first scriptures that I heard when I could learn to hear the Holy Spirit speaking to me. I'm washing dishes, and I just hear the word yoke, and I'm like,
like, yoke. I don't know. I'm a city girl. Yoke. I don't know about a yoke. And uh, I went to the Bible. I started looking up the word yoke. And when I looked at this particular scripture, it like it jumped off the page. And that's Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, glory to God. Now, in the Message Bible, this is how it reads. It says, are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? It says, come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a rest, a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Oh, hallelujah. What I remember when, 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 when I got this scripture and this word, life was such a challenge. My life was being turned upside down, and, and, but he allowed me to know, but come on, Shirley, come, come. If you learn of me, come on, come on, spend some time with me. Get into the Word. Let me teach you how to pray. Let me teach you how to how to how to meditate on my Word. You know, stay in fellowship. You know, be at at the church house, and and those things begin to cause my life to change. He says, "Come and you'll learn how much I love you and how special you are to me." And and so that that's what happens when when we come, we're able to rest. You know, he, he was talking to me about that the other day. Is that have you ever, like, slept all night, but you wake up and you feel like you have not slept at all? Because you can sleep and not be at rest. But he's saying that if we come, that he will give us true rest. Rest is when you're, you're not uh, losing sleep about something. You're, you're, not, you're, you're not worried about something, but you have true rest. And, and I was just so blessed by my, one of my daughter-in-laws, <clears throat> excuse me, one of my daughter-in-laws, Angel Jones, uh, went to work this morning, and she got on the elevator, and 6 o'clock in the morning, she's on the elevator, getting ready to go to her office, and the elevator breaks down. She's the only one on the elevator. At 6 in the morning, she's on the elevator, and the and the, and the elevator just stops. She says she heard a jarring noise, and then it just stopped. So she's on this elevator for an hour by herself, by herself. So I said, what did you do? And and she she said she had she still had her lunch because she hadn't got to her office yet. She had some snacks. She had her phone, and she began to worship. She said, "I had my 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 music, my 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 gospel music. I didn't want to use my phone too much because I didn't know want to know how long I was going to be in there. But I just began to worship." She said, "I sat on the floor because I wasn't sure whether if the thing started to move or drop, I wouldn't have this certain jar." She said, "So I sat on the floor." And I just began to worship. Oh, hallelujah. So she says, I didn't feel panicky. I, 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 I had peace. And she was resting in God. Oh, glory to God. She was resting in God this morning. And so after an hour, they were able to, to get her out of the elevator. And she was actually stuck in between floors. So she said that she didn't panic. She didn't start pushing buttons. She didn't try to open the door. You know, all the things that we have done. She would have been cussing and banging on the walls and having panic attacks and, and all of those things. But she rested. She rested in God this morning. She, she, she rested and, and she began to worship. She began to worship. It reminded me of, of Paul and Silas. Remember when they were in the jailhouse at midnight, they just began to sing songs of thanksgiving. That's where she found herself this morning, resting in him that he would keep her, and he did. And I'm so grateful to God for keeping her, but also to use her this morning now to be a testimony. She began to post some things, and people began to respond, wow, I needed to hear that, and wow, I don't know, I couldn't have been able to do that. But, but like she said, she don't normally post things, but she knew she had to do it. But I said, but even being stuck on the elevator this morning was not just about you, but was allowing you to be a blessing to other people to see that they could find rest in their worship, in their presence with God. So, so he's the one that causes us to rest when in certain situations that we would be all panicky and, and we would be mad and we would be scared and we would be a lot of things. 
but God will cause rest to come when we come and we stay before him. Hebrews 4 and 8 says, For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. He said there is a rest. In the Bible, he talks about there is a rest, not in rest now, but there is a rest. So that meant that there's a rest to come that can only come once Jesus was able to, to make the, the sacrifice for us. Now there's this rest that we have that's beyond sleeping for eight hours. It's beyond that. It's like the rest that we have that regardless of I may not have no money, but I can rest. I, 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 I may not understand how this is going to work out, but, but I can rest. Because why? Because he said to come, and he's able to give me a rest. He gave Angel Jones rest this morning, stuck in the elevator, because she was able to come. She was able to sit before him. She was able to worship, and that's what it does. It gives us rest. Also, when we come, it, he takes us into the truth of the matter. John sixteen thirteen. How be it when he... The spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He will show us things to come, the truth of the matter. When we come into the kingdom, there are so many untruths that we have lived our lives by, by by what society says, by what we thought, what our experiences are. But now that we come into the kingdom and we come before him, he leads us into all truth. Remember, Jesus said that it's expedient that I go away, that I may send the comforter, and he shall guide you in all truth. So when we come, you'd be surprised at some of the things that God will begin to show you that you thought was even truth, and it ain't even a truth. It's a lie that the enemy has told, and he has worked that thing so good that he has us believing a lie that now is the truth. Not so. The lie is the lie. The enemy is always going to be the enemy. I, I was thinking about this yesterday, and I said, Lord, I said, you know, it seems like the enemy has upped his game. And when I said that, Holy Spirit said, no, it's not that he's upped his game because he, he was always, John 10.10, 10, says that the enemy, the thief comes to, to steal and to destroy and to kill. That's his label, to steal, to kill, and destroy. He's always been like that. That's his, his tagline. This is what he does. So he says it's not so much that he has upped his game he says that we have fallen off of believing who God is. I'm like, what? He said, yeah. He said, when when you're not coming, when you're not coming, it looks like he's upped his game, but when you're not coming, you have nothing to fight with. You have nothing to believe. You have no truth of the matter. So it looks like, and you can easily fall into the trap of the enemy. So he said he hasn't upped his game. He said, but we have fallen off. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. So we've got to come, y'all. If we're going to be able to stand against the walls of the enemy, if we're going to be able to stand for, and, and, and fight for our families and our, and our children and, and, and the neighborhoods in which we live and the state in which we live and, and, and be able to, to stand for, for family members, we've got to be able to come before God so he can show us the truth of the matter. Holy Spirit's able to show you things that you know not of. He will show you when your kids are out of order. My kids, when they were little, I think they thought I used to I'd be able to look through walls because things would happen. They were like, well, how does she know that? Because she is praying, and because she is praying, the Holy Spirit is revealing. No, I can't see through walls, but I'm, I, I'm tapped into the Holy Spirit, and he's going to let me know. So come, y'all, come. If we, we want to see change in our homes. We want to see our marriages healed. We have to come before God that he can give us the strategies and, 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 and show us where things are broken and we have the truth of the matter so that we can begin to speak life into things that appear as if they're going to the left. Oh, glory to God. Come. He says, come. Then Romans 8, 
15 and 17. When we come, what happens when we come that we're partnering with God? Romans 8, 15 to 17 says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have, read the, have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. So if so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. He wants us to partner with him. God, God, whenever God did anything great in the earth, he used, he used somebody else. He didn't just do it by himself. He called people to partner with him. And that, that's what God is doing for us. If we're going to see change upon the earth, God is saying, I need you to come and sit with me. I need you so that I can direct you into the places in which you can be a blessing. I was in the uh, dollar store just the other day, and I had all these errands to run. And I said, okay, Lord, I said, I'm asking you to lead and guide me in my day. Guide my day, Lord God. Order my steps, Lord God. Show me which way to go. And he began to show me which place I should go. I had four different places to go. When I finally got to the dollar store, that was my Third, yeah, was at my third place was the dollar store. I'm in the line, and it's this tall guy. He's a he's the clerk that's in the dollar store, and uh, there was a guy that was talk, older gentleman that was talking to him, asking him about school and did he play ball and you know. And so he said, well, no, you know, I don't want to, you know, I'm in that school because I don't want to be broke in school. So he said, well, school is where you need to go so you don't be broke. And so he says, well, I, you know, I'm I'm part of of alumni at a college and. I'm on the board of this college, and I could probably really get you in. And so the guy just kind of looked at him. He said, yeah, you know, somebody else has said something to me similar to that. And uh, so the guy, the older gentleman, he says, okay, well, I wish you well. So he got ready to leave. So I said, wait a minute, hold it. I said, you guys just had this this conversation. I said, seems like to me y'all need to be exchanging numbers. So he looked at me. He said, well, I didn't want to hold you up. I said, no, I'm good. I said, but this conversation that you had you 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 guys need to be able to exchange numbers. And so he wrote his number down, his, his cell phone number, and his email address, and he gave it to the, ju- the young man. And he said, uh, you know, when you call, just tell me your name. I remember I remember your name. And if you're serious about this, I can I can get you in. I know I can get you in. So he left, right? And then he just told me thank you. So when he left, I said to the clerk, I said, I said, you know, meetings are not by chance. I said, you met this gentleman. I said, and it's not by chance. He said, yeah, I know. I said, so you need to make contact with him. I said, don't lose that number. I said, this is your second opportunity that somebody now is coming to help you. And he said, yeah, because somebody else had. I said, yeah, and you did nothing with it. I said, but this time you're getting a second chance. I said, promise me that you're going to call him and you're not going to lose that number. And he looked at me and he says, you know what, I do promise you, I'm not going to lose the number and I'm going to give him a call. So when I got outside, I said, God, I thank you because I asked God to lead and guide me in my day. And, 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 and he led me to that place. Had I gone to any of those other places on my list that I had to go to, I would have missed, I would have missed that opportunity to be an instrument to be able to hook them two together like that. I said, God, I thank you. See, that's what happens when we, when we come. Then we partner with him, and, and God is able to lead us and guide us into the things in which he would have us to do. It's not just about us, but it's that we want to partner with God so that our, that our light can thus so shine and, and that God can use us in the earth to bless somebody else. Come. He says, come and partner with me. I mean, I want to use you to, for, for you to be my hands and my, and my feet and my eyes upon the earth. I, I want to be able to use you to, to touch somebody, to raise raise somebody up from their sick bed. I, I, I want to be able to use you to, to bless somebody, uh, to be able to see in the spirit where somebody's lost and, and, and to be able to pray that that person that's lost can be found. I, I want to be able to, to use you to speak a, a word that will cause somebody to be delivered out of the clutches of the enemy. Come on, come, come, come. There's so many things that happen when we come. Real life, new life happens when we come. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, 
and I will hearken unto you, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. Right here, right here. He says that he knows, he knows, he knows what our expected end is. He has an expected end for us. We don't even know what that expected end is. I never thought that I was going to be a preacher. I never thought that I would be an author. I never thought some things that I'm doing now that I would be doing. But that was part of my expected end. As I continually come before him, I know that there is more books in my belly. I know that there's more messages for me to teach. I, I know that there's more places for me to go to be an instrument in God's hand, to be able to, to, to develop a, or deliver a prophetic word. I, I know that God is calling me to that as I continually come before him. And that's what God is saying, that you're trying to live your life according to your desires, according to the design of the world. He said, but I have an expected end that I foreknew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. Nobody knows you like me. Nobody knows that the time that you were even supposed to be born but me. I'm the one that said it's time for you to grace the earth. I'm the one that says that there is an expected end, that I have something in mind for you. My life looks nothing like I thought it would. And the interesting part about that, I'm still not there yet. I'm still moving into some uncharted areas of my life. I'm still moving into some places that, 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 that God has not t totally told me about. He's given me some glimpses of some things, but I'm not even there yet. I'm not even there yet. And so, so we have to come so that we can walk in those places because you can be making a bunch of money. You can know a lot of people, but is it where you're supposed to be? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, those things are not going to matter. Those things are not going to be able to keep you when all hell break loose because if you live long enough, there are going to be trials and tribulations in your life. There's a gentleman that I just heard about, and I don't know the person personally, but the person committed suicide last Thursday, and they said he had plenty of money, he had this, he had that, he had this and he had that, he had this and he had that, but he still committed suicide. Because why? Things were never shaped to, mo to keep us. Things were never meant to, to satisfy us, to take care of us. And so we've got to get to a place that, that we're coming to God and allowing God to, to, to awaken those gifts that's inside of us, to, to awaken those purposes inside of us. I believe that, that some things that I'm doing now, they couldn't even manifest until I came and stayed before God because they were never used just for, for the earth. They were used for the kingdom. Come on now. Come on. He's saying, come. Why did Jesus do all of that? Why did, why did, why did Jesus sacrifice himself for us not to come. Imagine he did all that and we're not coming. We're not tapping into him so that we can live our lives and be what he's called us to be. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Come on. Come on. He says, come and I will direct your path. There are days when I've, I've had a stirring not to go to work, not to go to work. Now, let me, let me, let me quantify that. It's like, don't get up in the morning and say, yeah, Paul said that when I get that feeling, I don't have to go. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about when you get it in the spirit, not because you just decide you don't want to go to work. But there are times when God has said, don't go today or don't or go later. Take the next train or, or don't go that, that particular way. It's, I don't know what God was keeping me from. Sometimes I see where there was an accident that I just missed because I went later. So we have to come and allow him to protect us and lead us and, and guide us and, and all the things that we do. And we acknowledge him, he will direct our path because we are not capable of directing our own path, but we have to allow him to do so. So what is he saying to us this morning, this evening? He says, come. He says, come. Come before me. Come and, and sit with me. Come and have audience with me. Come so that I can give you strategies. Come so that I can give you instructions. Come so that I can just love on you. I remember and when I said that love on you. I remember when I first moved here 
and the Lord said to me, he said, I moved into a furnished apartment, and uh, they had things for the kids. They had a pool, they had a jacuzzi, they had a sand volleyball court, and uh, it was really a nice place, and, and, and it was relaxing. And he said, but you don't understand, Shirley, what I kept you from. You don't understand all the things that were coming up against you in Philly, but I kept you. He said, so now I need you to come and just sit and relax. I need you to sit and relax and further sit before me so that you can get instructions for the journey ahead. Come on, come, come. Somebody right now, you're trying to figure this thing out, and God is saying, you don't have to figure it out. I got you. If you would just come, I will show you the next steps. Some of us are wondering whether we should take that job or not. God will let you know. Somebody is thinking right now, should I relocate? He will let you know. Should I marry that person? He will let you know. If you get before him, he will tell you the truth of the matter. He says, just come, sit with me so I can endow you. Sit with me so I can, I can correct you. Sit with me so I can lead you to your expected end. Sit with me so that you can partner with me. Sit with me that I may give you the truth of the matter. Sit with me that I can stir the, up the gifts inside of you. Get, get, get before me so that, that you can live in the kingdom. This is not the world system. It's, it's totally upside down. I'm about to do a study on that for the church of how, how the world system is totally different in the kingdom. It's upside down almost, turned upside down. But you can't know that until you get before God and he gives you the truth of the matter. Some things that we're walking in are not even the truth. Somebody has lied and we have, we have, we have accepted the, the lie for the truth because we didn't know no better. But when we come into the kingdom, he will reveal the truth of the matter. So tonight, 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 he is calling each one of us to come. All he says is come, come. He says there we will find rest and answers to everything and anything. So let us come and bring everything that is challenging us to look at it closer than God. There's some things that we're looking too close at, more so than we're looking at God, and that we can remain determined to come. He said you will make up ground and arrive on time, and it's an expected purpose and plan for your life. Oh, glory to God. Yes, he did. Some of us, you think that you've missed it. He said, no, 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 no. When you come, you will make up some ground, and you will arrive on time in his expected purpose and plan for your life. So I pray a release for you now, ha, huh? yea, God, for you to come and sit before God and get everything that you need for the journey ahead. So, Father God, we just bless you tonight. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, I thank you. God, I bless you, God, and honor you, Lord God. Even now the more, I pray that, God, that you would bless these, your people, God. I pray tonight that, God, that they will understand, God, that there's an open portal. There's an open invitation for them to come, that the veil has been rent. Father God, that they can come and have audience with you. That there's a seat, God, in heavenly places that they can sit, God, when all hell breaks loose, oh God. And that they can come, God, and, and get refreshed, God, for the journey ahead, oh God. That they can come, God, and receive healing, God. They can come and have their mind renewed, God. They can come and have their body touched, God. God, I pray tonight, God. Oh, God, that there would be this new awakening, God. There would be this new stirring, God, in the people this morning, God, this night, God, that the people will come, God, and sit and have audience with you, that you may lead us and guide us in everything, God, that you have for us, oh, God. I pray tonight, God, that I'm so glad that we're not left to our own accord, that, Father God, that we have you, if we tap into you, if we come, that you will lead us and guide us into everything that we need. We don't have to take hits that we're taking, but if we would just come, God, you said you would bless us. You would protect us. You would keep us, and that everything would be all right. So I pray tonight, God, I pray tonight that you would cause your people to be roused up and come, to get out of those dormant places, those stagnated places, and to come and be regenerized. God, renewed, God, renewed, renewed, God, in their minds, God in their bodies, Lord, in their soul. So, God, we thank you tonight, and we bless you, God, and we honor you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen, and amen. 
I believe that that word come is a universal word. I believe that God is speaking that to the world that can hear him. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. I I believe that God is speaking to the church first, telling the church to come, come out of dormant places, come out of just programs, but come into a relationship with him. So I pray tonight that if you're on the line tonight and you have never asked Jesus to come into your life and that that tonight, tonight you understand that you need to come. I need to come to, to a God that's bigger than me. I need to come so I can have wisdom and direction for my family and, and, and on my job and in my body. If so if you're on the line tonight and, and you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, I ask that you would repeat after me tonight and just ask, God, I ask for forgiveness, that you would forgive me for things that I might have said or done that was unpleasing unto you. I acknowledge that I am a sinner, but I know that I can be washed clean and new by you. So I pray that you would forgive me, and I believe that Jesus has died for me, and now that he, he has, has did all this for me, I want to come. I want to come and learn about all of what this is all about, that I can walk in some new places. So I pray that you would receive me anew tonight, and I'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So if you're on the line and, and this is the first time that you've asked Jesus to take your life over, I ask that you would just, you know, hit me up. Send me an email. Send me a text. Send me something so I'll know that, that it was you. And uh, I have some information that I'd like to send to you uh, to help you on your new, your new walk as you are coming before him. Uh, I want to encourage you to find a Bible teaching church. Uh, you're always welcome to come hang out uh, with us at Rehoboth. Uh, we're always there to welcome you in. But find a place where you can learn and be around other believers that are learning and becoming so that you can become all that God has called you to be. So I bless God for each one of you tonight. Uh, once again, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with me on the broadcast tonight. And join me again next month. Get the word out about this broadcast. Have a great week on purpose, and please hold for the final words. Be blessed, and don't forget, just come. We thank you for joining us on the Lifeline broadcast, and pray you've been blessed. Again, our church is Rehoboth Family Life Center, located at 17900 Queen Anne Road, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20774. Apostle Jones would love to hear from you. She can be reached via... Apostle S. Jones at RehobothFLC.org or by dialing 1-877-354-6082. Until next month's broadcast, good evening and God bless. I just believe God I believe I believe God I just believe God I believe I believe God Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord.